Shit don't go mad. They gon' jump whatever dick jumping at the time, girl. I find it funny how it was acting funny around me. Wouldn't let me touch it now. Think I'm disgusting now. I probably won't get no money out. I had to fuck with down. You my motivation. You the reason why I'm hustling now. You know I find it funny how you done acting funny now. My name rang in money pile. Showing off your body now. Dancing to my music now. Every show you in the crowd. Welcome in, welcome in. We're just getting started. We're going to see if we're in the void or if we missed it. Round two. <laughs> welcome in, welcome in. Happy Friday. How's everybody doing? Is everyone having a good Friday? Welcome in, welcome in. We're just getting started. See if I can get my mod back in the room. Welcome in, welcome in. We're just getting started. Welcome in, welcome in. Happy Friday. Is everyone having a good night? Welcome in, welcome in. Welcome in, welcome in. How's everybody doing? Hell yeah. <laughs> Is everyone having a good day? A good Friday? Woo woo! Yo! <laughs> what up? What <laughs> up? Welcome in, welcome in. We're going to see if we can get a couple more people in here before we throw a collective. The list is open. There's only a few spots tonight, so if you want to get on the list, it is 12-12. Kind of catching everybody a break. Thank you so much for the follow. It's 12-12 today. We got Cash App, we got Venmo. Links are in the uh, bio above for Cash App, Venmo. You got silver. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, hell, girl. <laughs> How's everyone's Friday doing? Is everyone having a good time? Is everybody living the life, living the dream? How's this energy treating everybody? I don't know about you, but today's been a good day over here. Today's been a nice, productive day. Got a worky tomorrow. Oh, hell, well. Well. Yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. List is open. We only have a couple spots tonight, so... Ooh, left ear ring. I don't know who just entered the room, but left ear ring. We have a couple spots left on the list today. 12-12 is what it takes to get on the list. We have Cash App, we have Venmo. We're going to wait for a couple extra people in the room, and then we're going to throw a collective. How's everybody doing? Everyone having a good Friday? Hmm? Welcome in, welcome in. I just hear battle-worn, tired, but not willing to give up. So somebody in this collective, and the collective in a, as a whole, has been battling something fierce. And they're saying one of your largest battles was actually yourself. They have you out here as the higher font, so you have learned the lesson of the student, which would be the hermit, and you are moving forward. Having a little bit of struggle with the willingness to follow your chariot. Welcome in, welcome in. Having a little bit of trouble with the willingness to follow your chariot. Some people have been fighting what they're saying, what they know to be what they're supposed to do. But they do have you moving away. They do have you moving on. They do have forward movement happening. So your battle is not in vain. Your fight and your struggle and your perseverance was not in vain. 
You have new beginnings out here. They're talking about it triggering the returning of your wheel. We have the Wheel of Fortune out here. For somebody, this is a new emotional endeavor as well. This is linked very, very closely to not only your mental state. Welcome in, welcome in. Not only your mental state, but your emotional state as well. This is where you turn things upside down. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Talking about somebody somebody who is battling completion. And they're talking about completion with the way that you view things. Your mental state. Maybe you were feeling left out. Maybe you were feeling put out in the cold. Or like everything was a struggle and things were never going to get better. They're saying that you actually fought yourself for a new perspective and you won. So congratulations. Welcome in, welcome in. How's it going, how's it going? But this victory in your battle is what they're saying is leading you directly into your new beginning. Now we don't have the fool out here, but we do have the empress. Let's see what we got here. We do have the empress and they're, they're directing me towards the fact that she is pregnant and birthing her new. She is birthing her new beginning, but they are tossing a word of caution for this King of Cups energy that we have out here to be careful that you don't become too, too focused or too stuck, they're saying, on the material things. So, so my team's saying, stick to what you know, boy. You're good with emotions. You're forgiving. You're caring. They're saying stick to that. Once you start delving in, they're talking about riches and fortunes. Once you start delving into the wanting of riches, what they're saying doesn't suit you, but it pats your ego. So they're warning somebody to be careful with their new accomplishments that they don't get pulled away in ego. And they start holding on to their physical abundances, as in money. They're, they're cautioning against greed here. And there's more than one way to be greedy. But in here, we do have the pentacles out, and they are talking about physical greed, not just emotional selfishness. They are talking about physical greed here. <laughs> but because my team is all about duality, they are pointing towards the fact that in order for you to have physical greed, that means you need to have physical abundance. So they're saying duality. Somebody's kind of giggling over here going, good news, good fortune, duality. Welcome in, welcome in. Yeah, don't go for the gold. Nope, don't go for the gold. Don't go for the gold. They're, they're just reminding you to keep your focus inward. You've overcome many obstacles because you were focused inward. But they are talking about you collecting your abundance. Woo. Yep. So all of this battling has directly led you to your tower. And your tower is self. Your tower wasn't anybody outside of you this time. You've dealt with a lot of physical struggle and a lot of burdens in your life, but they are talking about this one was just you against you. It wasn't you against the world this time. It was just you against you. And they're talking about the fruits of your hard labor, which they are directing towards your healing journey, your inward connectivity that you did between your masculine and your feminine, your inward caring. I am hearing a self-love journey. we got the sun card in the back of the deck. So for some of you, this might be, this might have to do directly with your confidence, your courage, but also your optimistic outlook on life. Also, your optimistic outlook. So you're no longer viewing the glass as half empty or half full. It is always full. The only question is by what medium. When a glass is half full of water, it is also half full of air. And they're saying you're starting to take this and apply this simple construct into every part of your life. And this is what's triggering your new beginning. They're talking about this joy kind of triggering the fire within you. We do have the Ace of Wands out here. And fire directly links to your creativity, but it's your spark, it's your passion. And they're saying that when you foster a good mental structure, a good mental foundation, a good mental element, like a good mental element, because they are relating it back to the five elements here, a good mental element, they are saying that you are also breathing air... <laughs> into the flame that is your fire and you're fanning the flames 
When, when it comes to your passions, when it comes to your creativity, that's exactly what you want to flame. You want to fan. You want to fan the flames of creativity. You want to fan the flames of passion. And you want to fan the flames of your potential. Man, that is a tongue twister. Fan the flames. And they, we had the success card out here, but they're also talking about how success looks good on you. And I feel the need to say success looks good on you, sir. Growth looks good on you, sir. They are talking about you coming out here in victory, of you having been through a lot like we just talked about. But they're talking about it's not just a thing that you're going to have to just suck up because you see it for yourself and nobody else sees it. They're talking about... About this being a big outward change and other people are going to start picking up on it. So they are talking about how some of your circle or your inner circle will feel left behind because you elevated at a certain rate. You embraced yourself. You embraced your gifts. You, you embraced your emotions. You embraced your wounds. All of these things which helped lift you as a whole. And they're talking about somebody here... Someone in their friends group is not going to be happy because that change happened to you before it happened to them. So they're just saying that, you know, somebody's going to be around you kind of sulking over missed opportunities, kind of sulking over the fact of why is it them and not me. And they're just telling you to stay focused. Do not get sucked in to their lack of creativity. Do not get sucked into their lack of fire. All the air that they're blowing, they're saying could Put out your flames. So they're just reminding you to stay focused. This is an inward revolution is what they're calling it. And they want you to be focused inward. But just know when you... This is kind of creepy. But because we're talking... <laughs> this is kind of creepy. But because we're talking about masculine energies, they are talking about a healed masculine. And when we're dealing with a perfectly healed masculine, it does attract your healed partner. So they are talking about you looking like a pretty, and this is a weird, this is why I said it's weird, because they're saying it in a weird way. You're attracting a pretty nice suitor. You're attracting a really put together better half. And this is coming out in the second deck today as the Empress. So just keep in mind, your healing and your journey is not going to go unnoticed and it's going to attract the right people. So they're just reminding you to stay focused. Welcome in, everybody. I missed a ton, didn't I? <coughs> welcome in, welcome in. Thank you for all the love taps. Thank you for all the shares. Thank you for the follow. I'm just scrolling through right now. At Wolf. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't pull in anyone's energy that doesn't give me permission. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you. The list is open. We have a couple of spots tonight. So if you want to get a spot on the list, Please make sure that you put in your donation early because I am going to close the list off at a certain point. We have Cash App and we have Venmo. It is 12-12 for reads. And if you are new here, um, welcome. <laughs> reads are not your typical reads. Um, I just follow what spirit guides me to say and do. So you are completely at the mercy of what spirit wants. <laughs> Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. How's everybody's Friday doing? Is everyone having a good Friday? Thank you for the fire. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for all the love taps. Thank you for all the shares and the follows. How's everybody doing? Is everyone having a good night? Is this a good Friday? I feel like this is a good Friday over here, so I hope it's been a good Friday for you guys. Welcome in, welcome in. Fab Friday? Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Yeah, you know what? It's been a pretty nice Friday. I came on a little bit late. I was I was reading one of my energy books, and then I got lost track of time. And then the next thing I knew, I blinked, and it was 8.30. Welcome in, welcome in. Hmm. Welcome in, welcome in. The list is open. We're doing 12-12 today. Oh, God, dang. Oh, hell. Oh, Jesus. This could not be any more stark from the, from the collective read we just did. This could not be any more upside down. Welcome in, welcome in. 
Oh, good lord. Oh, goodness. So, unfortunately, unlike the last collective read, so this just must be the duality in the collective, further showing the divide. So, somebody here is falling victim to cycles. And you are having trouble breaking. They're calling it your bad cycles. You're having trouble breaking your bad cycles. And this is directly leading you into un like unfulfillment. And a lack of fulfillment. Not only within self, but within your physical relationships around you. And relationships can be platonic, or they can be romantic. Or they can be paternal, it doesn't matter. Um, but they're just talking about this having an... Uh, of lack to it. And they're just talking about how you're using your strength in a negative way, which is very interesting. They're talking about your strength, but they're saying you're using your strength as in stubbornness in a negative way. You don't want to see something. So kind of like we were talking about this morning, unfortunately, there is a part of the collective who's putting blinders on and doubling down on something they shouldn't be doubling down on. Um, when spirit's asking you to move, grow, or evolve, that's the voice you should be heeding, but somebody out here is not doing that. And this is putting you back in, like, troubled waters is what they're saying. Back in troubled waters, you are having to become the student in this moment and realize that this is part of your karmic dance. And they are calling it your karmic dance. And they're just talking about how this relationship has wrecked you, is what they're saying. This relationship has wrecked you. Somebody is at a lack for confidence. This is what I said. This is so stark to what the last read was. Somebody has a lack of confidence. Their unwillingness to move from their current situation is stopping all their abundance from coming in, but it's also stopping their emotional balance. You're, in, you're currently in some sort of emotional turmoil, whether that just be the flow of the hot and cold, because we have a lot of water out here, uh, as of riding the roller coaster and not necessarily in the most pleasant of ways, more like getting whiplash around every corner, you're not realizing that you have the power to step off the ride, is what they're saying. <laughs> you, you're not quite realizing that the power's in your hand to exit at all costs. Somebody is, though. They are seeking out the need for balance. We do have balance as a bridge out here. They're, they're strongly suggesting that you reevaluate and reassess your decision is what they're talking about. Somebody here is not necessarily holding on to something as so much just ignoring its negative effects altogether. You're, you're, they're just talking about like your want for the next thing is what's perpetuating the same thing. So it's just kind of this this idea in the collective that as soon as I reach this, this will be better. As soon as I do this next benchmark, this will be better. As soon as I, as soon as I... And they're just saying you need to find <coughs> everything you need in the now moment and stop be waiting for everything. They are calling you uninspired. So just know when we're talking about elements and how we relate to the elements when we are uninspired we not only have too much earth but we also have a lack of fire so we have too little fire in us so we need to kind of ignite the spark again to get our flame going to get our inspiration going so you should be doing more things with your air element and more things with your water element when you are heavy with the earth welcome in welcome in when you are heavy in your earth element, you should definitely be bridging into your water and be bridging into your air. Welcome in, welcome in. How's everybody doing today? And this is part of your healing. The last card out here is your healing card. This is part of your healing journey. Is balancing those energies in a positive way. Because they're saying if you continue with the route that you're going, and this is the route that you're going is your cyclical nature, um, over and over and over again, the same cycle. They're saying that what you're actually going to find is a lack of victory, a lack of success, a lack of fulfillment, and you're just going to be further driving yourself into the ground. And they're just saying you need to stop, take a pause, have some patience, reassess, and re refine your balance within, and then move accordingly. Because once you are balanced, you are not going to want 
the same outside things as you have been attracting or finding attractive, is what they're saying. And that just kind of goes back to that quote. They're taking me back to that quote that's like, um, your type is your trauma. Your, your type is, is a... Is a breadcrumb, and when you're healed, which I don't think anyone's ever healed, but when you're more healed than you used to be, the things you used to find attractive are unattractive, because they just show up as red flags now, and they're talking about when you do this inner work, this inner healing that you have going on, when you start doing it, you're going to break this cyclical pattern, and you're not going to be as gung-ho about this person, or this relationship, or this friendship, as you think but it has to start on the inside is what they're saying. Sometimes you need to change the scenery, but they're saying that right now you're so gripping onto it so hard and you're unwilling to look at it as a problem. So you're kind of dulling yourself to the awareness that this is a problem rather than just not aware at all. You're ignoring the fact that you know it's an issue and they're just saying that this is what's causing a big riff right now in your energy. Yeah, I used to joke around with a friend, and uh, I used to say keys that the butterflies were red flags when I first started my my like healing journey or whatnot. I used to say that the butterflies were red flags. That was your nervous system saying, "I don't know about this," <laughs> and uh, I think sometimes that's true. <laughs> Not all the time, but I think sometimes that's true. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in. So, for those of you who are currently on your healing journey, because I do feel like we have a couple in the room, they're just saying... They're just saying that... Hold on. I don't know if it's my throat or just someone in the room, but holy poop. But for somebody in the room who is on their healing journey, because I feel like there's like one or two people either in the room or in the background, who this next message would be more aimed toward. So if you are on your healing journey and you've been doing the work and they're very, um, they're very adamant about the fact you've been doing the work, they're saying don't forget there are others like you. You're not the only one. And they're just talking about how this healing journey has pulled you into isolation and it has pulled you away from the people you used to be surrounded by. And they're saying that that is for a purpose. We need to separate your energy so you know where your energy starts and stops and another one begins. And they're just saying that this is the process where you got to trust. This is the part of the process where you got to put a lot of faith not only in yourself but in spirit around you. And they're talking about... If you can, they're saying like withstand, if you can have some patience and you can withstand the journey. Hey GL, how's it going homie? If you can withstand the journey of the little interlude part of isolation and, yeah, they're just calling it isolation and the separate moment. They're saying if you can have patience in that, they're bringing your community to you. And your community would be soul family. Your community would be your soul tribe. Your community would be like-minded people. And they're just talking about this. If you can get through this, this is where they're going to give you your quote-unquote retreat. This is where they're going to give you uh, your break, that place to run to when things get overwhelmed or overloaded. And they're just talking about... If you try to fill the, the void with just anybody, you're going to be left disappointed. So they're just telling you to keep in mind that the goal isn't to fill the void with anybody. The goal is to allow spirit to show you who you are to fill the void with. Who you are to fill that space with. Allow the energy to speak for itself is what they're saying. But in order for you to be shown what you need to see, they're saying you have to have patience here. Like somebody wants to rush ahead because it's uncomfortable and you're being called to find comfortability in the uncomfortable. And it's not easy and it's not fun. They're saying what you, what, what you have right now is an abundance of power and inner strength and a lack of balance. They're saying you need to find balance within yourself 
and you don't need anybody else to do it for you. This is part of that pull away. This is part of that separation that you're feeling is so that way you can, you can work on how to adjust yourself as needed. And don't forget, like we talked about earlier, like you are five elements. You are earth, you are air, you are wind, and you are fire, but you're also space or ether or spirit, depending on what section of cultures you come from. You are all five elements and you can balance all five elements yourself within you. And that's what they're calling you to do during this isolation. Don't get stuck up in the air element, up in your mind about how awful this is. And don't get bogged down by too much earth and get depressed and, and be a uh, couch potato. You know what I mean? Don't cry yourself a river and get too heavy in your water element. They're telling you you really need to cultivate a really healthy balance because then they can bring in healthy people around you when you... When you're not balanced and you're not healthy within yourself, that is what you will attract is unhealthy people. And then you will mistake them for the people spirit wants to put in your life. And they're just they're just telling you that this this moment in time during your journey is just so you can work out the kinks in your own energy for yourself. So they're just saying don't don't take it as a bad thing. You didn't do anything wrong. You're not being punished. This is part of growth is learning yourself and you can't learn yourself and you can't connect to yourself in a crowded room. So they're isolating you in a room by yourself with no, nothing but you and spirit and they're just giving you the time you need. But the more you're worried about the outcome and getting through it and getting to the other side, they're saying you're missing everything. So that's where the patience has to come in. You need to be present in the now moment. Focus on what you're doing right now. They're just talking about how if you're so ready to get to the other side of it, you're missing it. There's no destination. There's no other side. There's no destination. There's no final end game. It's a continuous movement, a continuous cycle, a continuous journey. So you need to appreciate the journey when it comes to your door and every step along the way. So if you are somebody who's looking to rush through it right now, Spirit's telling you to hold on and don't do that. They want you to really feel how you are connected to all things. They really want you to start breaking yourself down by the elements, seeing where you're lacking, seeing where you have excess, and then figuring out what works for you for balance. They really are asking you to really do that work. Welcome in, welcome in. Is that a gun? Is that two hearts and a gun? Am I seeing that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that that was an accident, but that's hysterical. <laughs> welcome in, welcome in. <laughs> 919 on the clock. Does what? Does this feel like a learning education relationship? Um, I know, it made me laugh too. Can you specify your question? I just don't understand it. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the taps. Thank you for the gift. I know I missed a lot while I was talking. The list is open. We're going to be on here for a little bit longer. If you want me to feel into it specifically for you, I can. Uh, reads are twelve twelve today. But I, I get, I'm going to be real honest. With your energy, it doesn't feel like a simple... Uh, it doesn't feel like a simple one answer. It it kind of seems like yours kind of overlaps. Like like one intertwines with the other. Um, if that makes sense. But we have Cash App, we have Venmo. If you want to get on the list, um, you can definitely do that. Just make sure you come back and let us know how you donated. We'll get you on the list. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, some people are, are heavy in one area or the other. Um, but as I'm reading your question, and then when you gave the second comment, my team was like, not easy. And they showed me, like, two, two things intertwining together, which is why I gave you the answer that I did. User number 7826. So I hope that makes sense. 
I hope that makes sense. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in, welcome in. We're just uh, kind of hanging out tonight. I know I came on a little bit late, but no worries. How's everybody doing tonight? Is everyone having a good Friday? Is everyone having fun? How's the energy been? It does multi multifaceted. Yeah. It does for sure. Yeah. Welcome in, Jay. How's it going? Hello, Keith. Felina? Welcome in. Welcome in, welcome in. If anybody has any collective questions or thoughts or comments, feel free to toss them down in the in the comment section. Anything that requires me to feel into you is a paid space, and that's 1212 today. We have Venmo and we have Cash App. Welcome in, welcome in. We're just hanging out today. It's kind of a flowy night. And my team was like, what? Girl. Gee. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, let me see. Miss Kayla. Miss Kayla. All right. Is that you? All right. All right, so, I know you said you jived with the collective. I know you said you jive with the collective, madam. However, you're going to get the same, the same question as everybody else gets. You know? Would you like me to feel in... <laughs> it's okay. Would you like me to feel in to anything in specific? Any direct question? Um, or something like that, or do you want me just to throw you a general? You know what I mean? Up to you, just let me know. Let me know what you would prefer so I can steer them. Anything you need to know? Alrighty. Alrighty, strap in. I make no promises that it has anything to do with the collective. I'm going to be real honest. I really, I don't, I get the feeling it might not. So just strap in. <laughs> oh my god oh my goodness you have so much going on here kid you have so much going on here. Oh no, that's not a good song. I mean it is, just not for this. Well... This is interesting. I'm not even going to front. This is interesting. You quite literally have multiple things going on. Like, multiple things going on, and they're all conflicted inside of you. A thousand percent. Like, the... <laughs> they're conflicted inside of you, and they're in disguise. One thing looks like another, another looks like something else, and then you're stuck in the middle with plenty of choices to make, is what they're saying. Like, plenty of choices to make. And they're talking about you, and kind of like your inability to make a decision, or you're not, you don't want to make a decision without all the information, without all of the... And they're just talking about, it's like you're searching... For the right answer. And they're being very specific. in you are mentally searching for the right answer. We have the five of swords out here. In reverse. And they're talking about. How there's been this war going on. And I know it's in reverse. But. 
you have your two of cups upside down. They're talking about you being in an inner battle. And they are very, 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 very adamant on that it is fueled by your mind. It is fueled by your mind. And some of your battle stems very deeply from your inner child. So some of the way that your construct is both mentally, but the way that your physical energy body reacts to situations, specifically disappointments, and struggle is directly linked to your child self is what they're saying. They are talking about your child self holding your torch. Now, when my team says your torch, they're talking about your fire element. They're talking about your inner spark. They're talking about, thank you for the gifts. They're talking about your creativity and your intuition. And they're talking about your child self holding your torch. But then we have your adult brain. But then we have your adult brain who is trying to make sense of everything and anything around you. And there is like this, this feeling like a part of you is like, what's the word? Let's see if I can find the word. Is like looking around the corner for something to be revealed, for, for some secret to be dropped, or like you don't have all the pieces, like you're missing something, um... And this has really been a struggle for you. Like, you, I, I get the feeling of you've been traveling through maybe some bad luck or some turmoil. And you're just waiting for like, oh, oh it's like almost like this. It's like this big aha reveal that it's going to make everything make sense. And then it's going to be like, yes. And it's going to make all the sense in the world. But they're also kind of making me get the feeling and they're bringing me back to like Aston Kutcher when he used to do like, can camera used to hide and be like, you're being punked. Like there's like this little part of you that is waiting for the big reveal is what they're talking about. That is looking over everything and is waiting for the more that is behind it all. Waiting for the more that is intertwined with everything because your intuition is ticking is what they're saying. Your intuition is ticking that this isn't quite it. I don't have the full picture. And Spirit's saying, you're right, you don't. They are alluding to a lot of secrets of self that will be revealed really soon to you, and they're directly linking it about yourself, but also your family. Also your family, and they're just saying that where you place, where you place your attention determines what gets revealed first, which is very interesting. But they do have you, like... They do have this bridging into a new start or a new beginning, but they are alluding to the fact that you feel foolish. So even though the fool card is out here, they are alluding to the fact that you have a chance of embodying the fool with a brand new beginning, but there's a part of you that is like, mm, I don't want to look foolish. I don't want to feel foolish. Is this dumb? Is this stupid? And there's like this battle of wits versus intuition is what they're saying inside of you and this is directly linked to a lack of balance within self too head heavy too 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 much thoughts too much inner conflict they're asking you to weed it all out i'm not sure if this is making sense to you but they are asking you to weed it all out because they are directly linking in two different decks your decision here you have two choices two ways to go and they are talking about it leading to new beginnings and it's not that one choice is right or wrong they're being very certain in saying that it's not right or wrong but they want you not to function off of what your thoughts or what your mentality tells you to do they want you to truly feel into it and move off of your intuition and they're saying you're not going to be able to function off of your intuition until you revisit your child foundation. Until you revisit your child self. And revisiting your child self is what's going to directly bring in your balance here. This is where your temperance card falls out. This is what directly links you into that inner peace. Which, if I don't know if you know it or not. <laughs> that's three decks out here, bro. I don't know if you know it or not. 
But this is what directly links you into your peace as your child self. So this may be a part of yourself that you're ignoring or you're unaware that there's even anything to be discovered in that area. But they do have you sitting at a crossroads and they're calling this a crossroads of your life. And this is another decision card, another mental choice card. And they are talking about being torn between two things. They are talking about divided loyalties here, and they are talking about this in a relationship sense, but also in like a what should I do versus what everyone expects me to do versus what would be best for the overall. They're just they saying you're taking too much into consideration. They're just asking you to consider yourself. And that might sound selfish, and, and I think that this might be where you're you're getting caught up because we do have you at the Eight of Swords feeling stuck and trapped in the middle of the crossroads, unable to make a decision because there's so many moving parts is what they're saying. They're just showing me gears and how one gear moves another gear, which moves another gear, which moves a pulley, which moves a belt, and then the clock works kind of deal. And they're just talking about you're paralyzed by a lot of things, but some of it is the is the loop of the mental chaos, but another one is also the fear of making the wrong decision or the fear of of like what am I gonna do? What if what if I can't go back? What if I can't? And they're just saying you can always change your decision at every moment. But they're just saying that you have to make a decision. And they are being very poignant in saying that no decision is a decision. No decision is choosing to do nothing and that is a decision all by itself and they're just being they're alluding to the fact that this is not a decision that you will be able to live with if you choose to do nothing this is interesting they just threw out the knight of wands and the king of pentacles so this is you quickly moving through to your security but this security could come in the way of somebody else. This this security for you could be directly talking about your outward relationship, which could be talking about your King of Pentacles energy. But they are talking about the need for patience and balance in it. You can't, as much as you want or you may have wanted or something like that to rush into something, they just want you to pause and to tune into yourself as to what you would like to do. Does this make sense? Hold on, let me see if I can like... Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I missed all of your comments. Hold on. Snooky wants smush mush? What does that mean? Okay, it is. I've definitely been off kilter. It's been hard. Wait to do even recent death requirements looming. School teaching, final kids, husband. There's just a lot to juggle. But that's the thing. There's a lot to juggle. Excuse me, transmutation. But they're just talking about... You're juggling all these other energies, but you're not taking yourself into consideration. Like, yourself is coming last. So this is your crossroad. Like, wh like what do I do? Well, you know, what, what happens first? Which one do I focus on? Which route do I go? Like, this is all the, the being trapped by obligation. The being being trapped by fear. If I do this, then I can't do this. And then what if I go over here? And, I, and this is what they're talking about. But you, they want you to get out of your head about... Which, what do I do first? Where, which way do I go? And they are just talking about a lot of, like a lot of chaos and indecision within your energy. And they're just asking you to kind of reel it back in. They're, they're trying to remind you that you are the queen of wands, that you are the strong, energetic, like brave, enthusiastic person. You know what I mean? But if you're not in balance, you can also... Be a little bit scattered you can be a little forgetful you can be a little grumpy so they're just saying that they want you in balance in order to best make the decision but the decision can't be dependent on the domino effect that happens from the decision they want your decision to be tuned into you they want your decision to be what's best for you in the long run so they're just saying your decision shouldn't be well if I do this then somebody might do this, or then this might happen here, or this might look like this to other people. They're saying that doesn't matter. They want you to tune into what you need, what you want, what you find you need to be focusing on in the moment, if that makes sense. And I don't know if you've been worrying about money. I don't know if money has been a worry. 
but they're saying you don't need to worry about it. Even if you've had, um, they're calling it a, a, a little bit of a string of struggle or a little bit of bad luck. They're just saying you don't, you don't need to worry about it because it'll make it worse. So they don't want you to focus on money if where money's coming from or a lack of funds or if you'll have enough funds is a thought that's happening. They're just saying that you don't. You don't need to put that much worry into it, but you need to put knowing in it that you're going to have exactly what you need to get through your decision-making process is the words that they're using. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. I'm not sure why monies came up, but they're, they're just talking about, about it not being a problem. So... Okay, good. Because they're just talking about that it's it's more of a distraction, is the word that they're using, than an actual problem you need to be focused on. Now, don't, you know, don't just be waiting for it to fall on your lap, obviously. But they're just talking about if you know it's there and you're doing what you need to in order to bring in money, then it's fine. You don't need to worry about it. Um, but excess stress and undo is a distraction, distracting you from your main focus, which should be you, and rebalancing everything, you know? It, but it, but it, yeah. 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 So do you have any... Do you have any questions... Because I feel like, by the way my team's standing here, you might. Do you have any other questions or do you need clarification on anything? It's just interesting. They're just standing here like there's... Like you might have another question. Fire away. What does that mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for like the question and I was like, what? <laughs> okay, my team's being a dick. My team's being a dick. They're saying if it leads you there, if you're led in that direction, if you have a natural pull and a natural interest in that direction, they seem pretty happy about that, I'm not going to lie. They they seem pretty happy about about that, uh, that option. I have three yes cards out here since you asked the yes, no. Yeah, I have four yes cards out. But my team's specifically talking about if it's something that you are being drawn to naturally, then that's what they want you to explore. Yeah. You don't need the Akash to do it, though. You don't need the Akash to do it, though. But if your Akash leads back to your inner child, meaning that it might have been a gift that you didn't know what it was, but it was there since your childhood, or it started rearing with your abilities in your childhood, that has the potential, and my team is smirking so hard, that has the potential to lead into your secrets. Unlocking your secrets of self. So it sounds like one leads to the other, which leads back to your secrets of self. What type of shadow work have you done? 
What type of shadow work have you done? Oh, of a thousand percent. Thank you for the tiny little dragon. I think they're so cute. What what type of shadow work have you done? And I don't mean like in detail. I just mean like, have you been working on more than just journaling? Have you done meditative, shamanic stuff? Uh, frequency, chakra work? Uh, have you done integration of shadow? Have you done uh, soul retrieval? Have you done any of those things? So this thing only lets me type a <laughs> No worries. No worries. Yeah. Take your time. Take your time. Meditate journals. Mirror to see my own self from people that bothered me. Oh, a thousand percent. You would benefit from chakras. You would benefit from direct chakra work, is what they're talking about, is what my team's saying. They're pointing me directly to your root and your sense of security, to be very honest. Um, and your sacral. So they're pointing me to your root and to your sacral. So directly um, directly linked to your security, your safety, and your truth. Um, specifically where it comes into uh, those two chakras. Obviously all the other chakras are going to have a trickle effect. But they are talking about that being a very um, good starting point. Because the root chakra is directly linked to our adolescence. And directly linked to our childhood. Um, yeah, I can read others like a book, but mine gets dark even when I'm open. Yeah. Yeah, some people like, but see, so I don't, I, I get the feeling. Are you talking, okay, let, let me clarify here. Are you talking about chakras with that comment or are you talking about Akash? Because some people feel as though they can't read their own Akash. And if that is something that you believe that is happening, then you might just have to seek another person to help you work through that. But if you're talking about chakras, that's a direct disconnect. And that is a blockage in your subconscious that is hindering your conscious awareness. So that just means you have to get your subconscious talking to your conscious. And I know that sounds so crazy, but we call it bridge gapping here. And you're reintegrating and you're closing the gap between your subconscious and your conscious so they can work together in your intuition. Does that make sense? I know sometimes that gets kind of wordy, but... You're a solar person. Yeah. So, I love the sun. I love the, I am very connected to the sun. I'm, I'm equally connected to the moon, but I've done a lot of work with the sun, and the sun is fantastic. Um, but they are directly talking about, about your root, and... They are directly talking about your sacral. So those might just be two things that you could revisit, activate, and clear up. Um, they said yes and no, but not the definition you're working with. So I don't know what definition of dream healer you're working with, but they're saying yes and no, but not the way you're, you're, you work outside, you have the ability to work outside the parameters on which you're defining dream healer. So, um, 
that makes me feel like you might be more like I am. Um, where you're heavy astral. And this might be what's leading you to say dream healer. But um, you're heavy astral and you do have the ability to travel in the sense of dimensionally or interdimensionally to do things. So if that's what you're um, kind of talking about, my team's leading it more there than actually um, the textbook definition of dream healer. My, my, my God, I almost got hit. My, um, my guides are talking about, um, how it, how that limits you more than you realize at this moment because it's not fully awakened. So that dream healer, it limits your traveling ability. Because you don't. I'm going to get hit. You'll figure that one out. You'll figure that one out. I'm going to get hit if I if I say anything else. But they're just saying that that definition limits you and they want you to not be limited. Well, you know what? Um, I know personally in my space and Kiza's space, Kiza Wisdom 369, my lovely mod right here and business partner, um, we get put on lockdown sometimes. Um, and lockdown sometimes happens is what we lovingly call it. Lockdown or shutdown or shields up mode. Um, and a lot of that, that comes sometimes with transitions. And right now the entire collective and the universe and the planet is transitioning into balance. There's been a, a heightened amount of cosmic energy, um, specifically throughout the last week. And I'm like physically getting cold chills, even though I have a hoodie on. Um, throughout the last week, which has been forcing the collective back into balance. So that means a lot of reaping what you sow, a lot of cause and effect, a lot of karma, a lot of transition both in planetary alignments, but also collective energies. And sometimes for our own protection, when we are energetic, our team will, will, will turn us off and put us on a little bit of lockdown. It's just heightened protection. Um, so sometimes it's not necessarily that we're wrong. Sometimes, and especially with my team in particular, and I know Keys has expressed to me that this has happened to her before, um, sometimes they turn you off for a little bit because you have to understand that our existence here is also to be human, right? So sometimes when we're making really good headway and that pff, it's to balance out your etherical with your humanness, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I did a video a couple weeks ago as we were leading into this big transition. Um, and it was talking about that, how when, we're get, when we get put in a new place, sometimes they take a step back. And my team was very adamant on kind of sharing with the collective that they haven't left. It's like they gave me the analogy of, of putting your kid in a swimming pool with swimmies. They're in the pool with you, but they're going to let you figure out how to swim because you're protected. So sometimes the being left alone is not alone and you're being left alone so you can figure it out yourself. And um, they want you to get a new, a new like rhythm and flow because as we transitioned into this, wherever we're at with all the energies, it's wildly different than a month ago. Yeah, but see, but that's the thing. If they were always there, you would never know how to how to battle that. How to battle the left alone with your thoughts. Yeah, but see, but that's the thing, and that's where it goes that's why they're highlighting the root chakra. Um, a core foundation of our fear lives in the root chakra. A core foundation of being afraid lives in the root chakra. So that's why they led you back there, because that's where you're going to combat your fear. And then once you can look your fear in the face or the thing that made you frightened, 
you take your power back. And then that's what clears up your energetic channels. I do, I do. Um, that's what clears up your energetic channels, pathways, nodes, meridians, and your chakras as a whole. And starts elevating your chi and prana. And that's what allows you to connect more easily. Especially when it comes to your abilities and your astral travel and stuff like that. You know? So that would be something that I would... Um, I would highly recommend you delving into, you know. <laughs> and, but that's okay. Like, a lot of times throughout the journey, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I do. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry, user. I do. Um, I do mediumship, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, link tree in bio, www.childbalance.com. You can schedule there. It's like 30 bucks for 30 minutes or something like that. And you can read the description and all that. If you have any questions, just give us a holler. Um, so, but do I need to restart? No, you don't. But I look at it different than starting over. Because you have a different mindset now than you did when you first did it. You have a different lens you're looking out of. Sometimes we have to revisit things and re redo things, review things. Because we're at a different level. So we might have scratched the surface in the beginning and then we got frightened or scared or we didn't want to look there and we like move, move away, you know, and, um, and that's, that's, you know, that's part of it. And then when we get to another level, we're more willing to dig deeper into things and we dive deeper and we're more comfortable with things. And you can do that many, many times. I'm not going to lie. I ripped myself open and went through the worst dark night of the soul I think I've ever experienced. And then when I thought I was at my bottom, my team giggled and then gave it like two months and then ripped her open again. So um, it's all a growing path. Um, I don't think we're ever truly healed. I think we're always healing because every choice and... Um, decision and everything that we make it gives us another learning opportunity and we also might pick up things we need to heal or reassess along the way you know um oh my god no it's fine it's like it's it's a thousand percent fine um i'm gonna be really honest harley i don't know that i that i have the energy left after being on here for like two hours to give you mediumship tonight but the website books within 24 hours. So you would be able to book for Sunday because Saturday, I think we close at like 8 p.m. So you can book for Sunday and, and we can sit down and we can do one-on-one -on -one and I record the session and you get sent a recording of the session should you want to look back at it or listen for EVPs or stuff like that. Um, but whole, like whole honest... I don't think I have the energy tonight for um, a full mediumship read, nor am I set up on here to do it. Um, they're saying both. They're going to be the cause of your of your scrapes, but they're also going to put the band-aid on. So both. But... They're only going to do what you consent to. Like, they're not here to hurt you. You you are in the full driver's seat of that. Which is why they're telling you to go back into your chakras. So that you're in control when you delve into your chakras and pair it with shadow work. And if you want help with that, we have those services. Like, I teach people in shadow work and we work through it together and you get documents to do and you go through the chakras and you know depending on what your team asks for we do that so if you want that there are private sessions for that if you just want help with like one thing like just one question or you're just stuck in one thing and you don't want to do several weeks and you just want to we have a session for just like one spiritual guidance or assistance question you know what i mean like you just want to do a self-study 
but maybe you just want a little bit of help on where to start or blah, 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 like, or what what's going to work best for you, or you started and you had something come up and you're just struggling and need help over a hurdle, like, that's what that space is for. You know, we opened up full-blown mentorship, which is wild, and there has a whole list of stuff that we cover, and it, it is, like, top to bottom, um, getting all the way around the block and back, um, but those services are always there for you. The link is in the bio, you know. Oh, they're open. Like, become a member on the website, Kayla. Become a member on the website. It's 100% free. It'll never cost you money. But you can gain points, and it'll cost... It'll take money off of services. So, right now, like, the lowest tier is, like, 200 points is 20%. So, you can save quite some money by earning points, um... But then there's a bunch of stuff there that, you know, that'll help you. We have a free tree of knowledge. We post spiritual shit there every Wednesday and Saturday. Every Monday is a collective toss. You know, um, I have a YouTube channel in here that has a bunch of different meditative stuff, and it's in a meditative playlist. Um, there's, like, a whole, a whole bunch of shit that you can do. Um, we have made the... the the community here very accessible for all levels of spirituality problems issues but also for all levels of budgets like ain't nobody made of money all levels of budgets you know what i mean so don't feel pressured into anything but definitely check it out so you know your options and our services are always changing i'm going to be adding a chakra course i'm going to be adding a an energy healing course and then i'm going to be adding energy healing services so I'm going to be going fully into that because that's what I do best, that mediumship. Um, but we're just unveiling things slowly so as not to overwhelm any of our staff. <laughs> so, but thank you so much for allowing me in your energy, allowing me to talk to your guides, and allowing you know me to help in any way possible. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing space, time, and energy. So I will see all of you guys tomorrow afternoon, uh, probably around like 11-ish. Oh my God, a thousand percent. You're welcome to be here, share space, have fun anytime, dude. So thank you everybody for, for stopping in. Thank you for being here. Like I said, if you're not a member of the website, it is www.childofbalance.com. And there is... Um, what do you mean? I'm. I didn't. See, I didn't see a. Did you donate, Brittany? Let me look. I didn't see anything. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't see anything for you, Britt. Did you say you donated? I'm sorry. What, what did you send it as? Venmo, Cash App. Did I miss something? Keys, did I miss something? Oh, I can, but it, it's a it's a paid space. Miss Kayla paid, I'm sorry. It's a paid space. Um it's 12:12, you know, tonight, but um I'll be on Saturday. Saturday, um Yeah, no, it's good. We we got it cleared up. No, you're good. Um, I'm going to be on Saturday, though, uh, around probably like 11 or noon or something like that. Did this screen change? I look funny now. I think the screen changed. I mean, I'm not hating it, but I don't know if it changed for you guys, but... Oh, God, that looks weird. Um, not without feeling into you directly. And um, in order for me to feel into you directly... It's 12-12, just because of the amount of energy that it takes in order to do uh, focused reads versus collective. Um, we try to get pretty specific. But, alright, thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you for sharing space. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for all the taps. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the baby dragon, Miss Cheryl. That was amazing. I will see you guys all tomorrow. Thank you so much.